Hello and welcome to the Authority of Love. I'm Greg Williams here with my co-host for Family Foundation Friday, Mr. David Walls, Executive Director of the Family Foundation. Welcome, David. Greg, happy to be with you. Yeah. Love it, love it. Uh, we've got a lot to cover today, so I'm not going to waste a lot of time. Uh, well, we do want to say it, it was a, a, an exciting and great game in the Super Bowl this year. We've got to say that because it's a topic of discussion, it right? Was, it yeah. was, it was. Uh, it was a exciting game, exciting to see it go to overtime. Yeah, as yeah. a um, Dallas Cowboy fan, I, I didn't lose any sleep over the 49ers losing. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. As a Bengals <laughs> fan, but but I got to say, I really like the way both of those those programs are run. Yeah, they do a good job. You know, nobody's perfect, but do a good job. And the Chiefs seem to be building a dynasty. They do. The, yeah, yeah. It seems like it. Here's the here's With the a good East Texas boy as his quarterback. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's exactly right. <laughs> And he came out of nowhere. Man. It, 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 it was awesome what he's done. Lights out. Yeah. The sad part that we have to report on that, and to you as listeners, you probably heard all this, but uh, number one, pr our prayers go out yes. to the victims of the shooting that happened at the end of the prayer. Well, yeah. A great day of celebration. Everybody wasn't probably yeah. celebrating the right way, maybe, but it was a great day of celebration. And then to have something like that happen. I had a really good friend, actually a, a couple, and, and the wife of that mentioned something about, uh, you know, we've got to stop this. Yeah. And I said to her, I knew she would agree, but I said to her, uh, confiscating and legislating, taking away of, of guns is not going to do that. That's only going to uh, continue to encourage that's the evil surface, and the lawless. That's just surface level. That's it's exactly so much, right. So much deeper. And, and those who do not pay attention yeah. to the law will continue to do that. Yeah. And, and it, that, that hurts us. Yeah. Only way we can do that is point them, as we try and do every week, yeah. to the one who can change hearts, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen. we got to do a cultural and a heart change, and, yeah. and that does start in the heart and the home. So we wanted to say that also another, what they're touting as a great thing, but you and I both know there's a whole lot more sad to this than good, and that's the gambling records that were set. Yeah, yeah, Greg, we, we uh, talked about this in our Let Us Pray devotional earlier this week, but, you know, record audience tuned, tuned into the Super Bowl. Unfortunately, there was a record amount of dollars that ultimately were, were wasted in yeah. gambling on the Super Bowl, something like to the tune of almost 70 million people being reported right. bet on the Super Bowl and 23, wow. over $23 billion dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and obviously um, sports betting is, is legal now in Kentucky and, and 30 some Most other states. states. Yes. Right. Um, just a, a, another reminder of um, the addiction side yeah. of it yeah. uh, because, and the uh, fallout. you know, and there's just yeah. been more, more studies of, of recent. We're not going to go down too far on this, Greg, but, you know, particularly the 25 to 35 year old male demographic yeah. that's already, you know, Higher in addictive tendencies, yes. you know, because of video gaming, and video like game. That. Exactly but I mean, that's right. what, essentially yeah. what this sports betting that's is what now. Doing. It's, exactly it's right. built like a, you know, like a video they game. They even it that you, way. Yeah, you can you can bet on each yeah. player, each person at bat, yeah. or each throw, yeah. or whatever yeah. it is, so you can get an immediate response. I thought the game was exciting enough, Absolutely. just as it was. Absolutely, it was a great game, yeah. Yeah. and it's disappointing to see our culture take sports and turn it into something that's promoting something that's yeah. ultimately and, and harmful. We'll, we'll probably, when sports is a, is a great thing. It is. To, There's uh, character yeah, building yeah. and a lot of that. Here's the other thing. They will probably come back to this at some point if we can find it. Yeah. We look at the statistics at where that money ended up. Yeah. A huge, we know this already. I can't right. give you numbers, but we know this. A huge majority of that, those dollars ended up in the hands of the gambling enterprises. Right. And they also promote a lot of other things that destroy our culture. Yeah. But, but they tied it on commercials and stuff like, this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Right. Go out there and have fun. Yeah. And like you said, I enjoyed the game. Yeah. I didn't need to take a chance on losing my money that, that helps take care of my, my wife and my family yeah. and those kind of things. So that was tough. I do want to transition here, David, because I, it, the viewers will see this. I've got my red shirt on. I'll, I'll wear it two or three times a year, but usually Christmas, obviously. And then Valentine's Day, which we just had a couple of days ago. And I say that because... Our culture, as with many other things, David, has promoted this as romance, love, sex, cards, jewelry, flowers, candy. Yeah. Most of that, there's nothing wrong with. Now, sex outside of marriage, yeah. that's another issue, biblically speaking. But most people don't know that Valentinus, St. Valentine, was actually martyred because he was going against the emperor. I think it was Claudius, I'm not sure, but he was going against the, the Roman emperor and the entire empire and government because they had outlawed marriage. 
thinking that men would fight more for their empire and their country if they weren't married. History has proven them completely wrong. Yeah. But they caught up with Valentinus and martyred him, killed, executed him because he was standing for God and God's word and marriage. Yeah. And that's what you do and we do every day, David. And that's why we talk about these bills. Yeah. And we're going to ask people to be Valentines with us. Yeah. To join we us, need, right? We need a generation of folks that's willing, regardless of what the government may promote or the culture may promote, uh, in terms of, of deceiving and ultimately lying about what marriage is and what its mm -hmm. purpose is. Or what life is. Or yes. any of these, right? Uh, right. We, we've got to continue to stand for, stand for truth. And um, uh, knowing that, uh, you know, society is built upon marriages. Okay. And when yeah. marriage and the family falls... So do uh, yeah. So does everything else. Yeah, and I'll mention this, and then we'll get into the bills. I know you've yeah. got some you want to you want to highlight, but I, in my devotion this week on the Love and Lordship Facebook uh, page, uh, I talk about some of these things. And one of the things I talk about is Vladimir Lenin. People may know that name a lot won't today yeah. because we don't talk about him because he was the architect of the communist regime in the Soviet Union, in yeah. Russia, and the Soviet Union. Go if you can and check that out, what he said, and see if it's not the playbook for what the liberals, and I'm not just saying Democrats, there are rhinos and all kinds of others, but the, what, what the liberals are doing in our culture today literally is following exactly what he said. Yeah, take God out, attack the, yeah. attack the family. Have teenagers yeah. and young people think about sex yeah. and athletics and nothing of, of real importance. Right. We talked athletics is good, yeah. but it's good because of character. Those kind of things. So if you get a chance, go back and check that out. I'd love to know what you think about that. And with that said, David, let's jump into, I know you've got a couple of bills and an update on the DEI bill, first yeah, of all, right? Yeah, we talked some about uh, Senate Bill 6 by Senator Mike Wilson and, and the a great hearing that was had last week. That bill actually this week uh, passed the Senate chamber. Yeah, so it received Good. a full vote, passed. Uh, and is now uh, moving on over to the House. Of course, as we discussed, there's a really, really great uh, version of a bill to, to stop these harmful DEI policies already in the House uh, that hopefully will um, uh, get moving itself, and that's House Bill 9 by, by our uh, great champion for uh, family values, Representative Jennifer Decker. Yeah. And so appreciate her and her work on that issue. Obviously, the work last session that she did yes. protecting uh, and leading, really, the charge to protect uh, children from gender transitions, yeah. uh, but thankful to see that the Senate's already taken action to uh, to try to help put a stop to these to these harmful policies that are sowing, as you and I talked, sowing division and discrimination mm -hmm. uh, into our uh, classes in uh, in terms of how they're hiring professors, yeah. all that comes with that. the way they're manipulating children. We talked about that right. with with Randy Adams a few weeks ago, yeah. and those kind of things going on. Yeah. Uh, now. The, uh, we're not going to prognosticate, but it does look like it probably will pass the House, likely. We'd love to see it strengthened, maybe, yeah. come together with those bills, yeah. come together and be strengthened. Yeah. Right, look, we we need to have as, uh, we're, we always are in favor of passing as strong as laws possible. We yes. recognize, you know, legislative process, you know, when the sausage is getting made, uh, <laughs> different <laughs> yeah. things. Yeah. 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 Uh, but the reality is these, these policies are 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 harming our universities. They're harming, uh, I mean, we're increasingly seeing them pop up in K-12 through yep. as well. And that's been their design uh, all along. Right, yes. so there, there's a lot of work still to be done, but encouraged by the progress that is being made and the willingness in both chambers, it seems, to to address these, Moving that these direction. policies. Yeah. Excellent. So, uh, you know, Greg, one of the other big ones, and you and I have kind of uh, briefly talked about this a little bit, but I wanted to, um, glad we have a little bit more opportunity today to talk about it. One of the most important bills this session is uh, House Bill 304, uh, and that bill's been filed by Representative Shane Baker. And that bill really is a follow-up to Senate Bill 150 from last, ses uh, last session, specifically the portion of the bill. Which was the big bill. Last. We yeah. talked a lot about that, right. One, right? So this kind of builds on that? Builds on that yeah. as okay. it relates to the provisions about protecting parental rights in our schools, okay. in, our, in our public schools. And so, as you and I talked in, in, in pretty good detail, different points last year, you know, there are school districts here, Fayette County Schools, yep. Jefferson County yep. Schools, that literally enacted policies directly in opposition to SB 150 yeah. as it relates yeah. to uh, some of the um, discussion on LGBT issues, as it relates to student privacy and safety. Of course, our uh, t the Attorney General's office had put out uh, a guidance 
um, saying that you know those were false uh, policies in Directives, terms of right. they were relying yeah. on the KDE uh, policies that was trying to subvert some of the protections in that law. Anyways, um, what this would do would add some further clarity to the law. It would also uh, allow parents to have uh, an opportunity to have the law enforced. So it would give them essentially some uh, opportunities for enforcement. A standing, basically, right? right? right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Very important. And then it would also mention, you mentioned Randy Adams and, Adams and, and, and other situations that developed in Anderson County. You and I talked about that where we had this school counselor that was going behind parents' back, really a Christian family, had been targeted because of their biblical uh, beliefs. With the support, although secretly, of the superintendent, right? right. All that right. was going on. You right? know, yeah. a school counselor should not be meeting for a student, be meeting with a student, in this case, uh, apparently for five straight weeks without parents being notified. Right. 200 right. personal text messages being exchanged between yeah. a school counselor We've got to put parents in the driver's seat. And so what House Bill 304 would do would simply say that parents have to be notified. Yeah. If, a, if a school counselor is Great need for this bill for that reason. Right. right? Yeah. So we just launched a, um, an updated action alert. We're really encouraging folks. If folks go to our website at KentuckyFamily.org, go to our Take Action page, you can reach out and send an encouraging message to your legislators on House Bill 304 and, and many other issues. Uh, but we're we're now Greg, past the halfway point. It's hard to believe. Yeah, yeah. past the halfway point kind of, of the on. session, yeah. Yeah. and it's really time to. Uh, we're so thankful for those that are making phone calls as our citizens has continued to right. to get out. Folks that are making phone calls, churches that are sharing sharing our citizens in other ways. This is a great time to be encouraging your legislators to stand firm on some important yeah. issues like House Bill three hundred four. Yeah. So we've got. House Bill 304, yeah. we're talking a call to action and to prayer. Right. Please be praying about these. House Bill 304 is parental rights and education, yeah. greatly needed, strengthens SB 150. Uh, you talked a little bit about their uh, the, the bill, uh, SB 6, yeah. which is the DEI. We yeah. need that to be continued to push through and strengthen, yeah. so call about that. Or uh, there's other things you can do, too. Yeah. You can, yeah. you can uh, email or some other things, too, as well, if you do Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Call yeah. the message line. Uh, get on KentuckyFamily.org, KentuckyFamily.org, or you can get the citizen. Yeah. By the way, you were telling me I got to get mine and get yeah. it to my church, right? Because the, the, the demand is succeeding the supply, it right? Is. We're so having to do a, a second print run. So thankful for all the volunteers that have been just taking them to churches and distributing and for the overwhelming requests that we've had to mail citizens to folks to share at their own church. I've been joking, our, our, our team here uh, has been doing such a great job. We look like we were running an Amazon operation earlier this week <laughs> with all the packages right, we were right, putting together. Right. But each one of those represents you know, someone in Kentucky who's willing to share important information and, and, and equip their church to be salt and light. So that's something we, uh, I'm just so thankful for. Uh, and it's, one of, you know, it's just one way in which we can engage our government and help encourage our uh, elected leaders to promote God honoring policy. So and as Valentinus did to stand against those things that clearly go against God's yeah. word and his laws. Absolutely. And so we've got to do that and we're asking you to join us and you can do that at kentuckyfamily.org. You can call the message line. It's 800-372-7181 and you'll see that on the site and yeah. in the citizen. Thank you for joining us. Thanks always for your prayers and to the Lord. Make it a great day, and God bless in the love and worship of Jesus Christ. I'm Greg Williams, and you're listening to The Authority of Love.